rolling. All right. So this is how to use the pottery wheel in my classroom. Um, first step is you're going to want to prep some clay. You're going to get a piece of clay about a pound and a half big. You're going to wedge it up and then you're going to pat it into a ball. should be around the size of like an orange or a small grapefruit to start off with. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have anything um, dangly hanging off you. So long hair is pulled back, no necklaces, no like strings from sweatshirts or anything like that. If you're listening to music and you have earbuds in, you need to tuck that into your shirt um, and then into your pockets. You don't want anything that could get caught in the wheel. The wheel is a really powerful motor and could cause serious injury if something were to get caught in there. Um, you also may want to put on an apron, which I'm going to skip, um, but those are located in the corner of the classroom by, by the black cabinet. All right, when you get to your wheel, this is how it should look. Power cord on the top of the wheel, uh, accelerator pedal on the top of the wheel, all right, and everything is nice and clean. All right, step one, you're going to take your accelerator pedal, put it down on the right side of your wheel. Then you're going to take your power cord and you're going to go ahead and plug it in to the wall. Okay, right over there. Um, then you're going to turn on your, um, your wheel, so the power's on a box on the side here. Boom. It'll light up and you'll know that it's on. All right? Tools that you need. Um, you need a water bucket. All right? You need a sponge. You need a rib. I've got a wooden rib and I've got a rubber rib here. All right? I like to have a wooden tool. Okay? And then you never know when you'll need a needle tool. So I like to have one of those handy as well. Um, you'll also want a wire tool for taking your piece off, um, but you can get that after you've thrown your piece. Okay, all of these tools can be found on the back counter, all right, and the water container can be found in the cabinet above the tools, all right? As far as your seating goes, you want a stool that's the same height, somewhere around the same height as your wheel. All right, and then I like to set up another stool over here that I can keep my water on, okay? All right, awesome. So, um, first step is you want your body as close to the wheel as your, um, your stool will let you be, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your sponge and you're going to wring it out, and then you're gonna just gently tap it onto the wheel head. You might be able to see there's a slight um, spot where you can see where it's um, a little bit wetter right there. All right, that's all you want. You don't want to put a bunch of water on your wheel head. Your clay will slide off. But if your wheel head's completely dry, it'll be harder for your clay to stick to the wheel head, and that's essential. Okay, so that's um, how you're going to prep the wheel head. All right, you're going to take your clay, all right, your ball of clay. You're going to place it as close to the center as you possibly can, and then you can give it a couple pats down on top. All right. Once you've done that, you're ready for step one of throwing, which is adhere the ball of clay to the wheel head, all right? So I'm gonna slowly spin the wheel. This is about kind of slow to medium speed, all right? And once I get my wheel speed um, with my pedal, I take my foot right off. So I don't have to worry about this limb controlling anything. I get the speed set and then I just kind of set it and forget it. If I need to change the speed, I put my foot back on the pedal, make that adjustment, and then take my foot off again. And that way I'm only worried about these two limbs up here and not necessarily um, controlling my feet as well. All right, first step, we're gonna get our hands really wet and all we're gonna do is we're gonna come down on top of our clay and we're just gonna push some pressure. Just put some pressure on the clay and we're going straight down with the pressure. So I'm using the, the, um, the fist right now, all right? You can also use the karate chop, all right? You can come down on top of it like that. You can also just put your hands on top of the clay. Either way, you're pushing the clay down onto the wheel head. You're trying to get that clay to stick, all right, to the wheel head. You have to keep um, the clay wet as you do this and throughout the whole process of throwing. Um, if your clay gets too dry, then the clay will start to stick to your hand and then your hand will throw it off center or peel it up off the wheel head. Um, so it's really important to keep it wet the whole time. All right, once you put some pressure on the top of it, you're not like flattening it like a pancake, but you're just putting some pressure down. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come around to the sides, get the side of your piece wet. We're not centering yet and you can really tell that this clay is not centered. Look at how my hands are moving around. That's how you tell if a piece of clay is centered or not 
is if your hands are still, all right? So you can really tell this clay is not centered, all right? So what we're gonna do is just get your finger wet and you're gonna push in on the edge of your ball of clay. And all you're gonna do is create a skirt, all right? You're basically gonna create a seal. So this ball of clay is adhered to this wheel head and we're creating this seal around the bottom of the ball of clay so that no more water can get underneath this ball of clay. All right, if water gets underneath, then it'll slide off and that can be really frustrating. So we create this seal so water can't get underneath, all right? So once you've pushed your clay down like this and you've created your seal on the side, you're ready to start centering, all right? That's step two is centering. Centering is basically um, getting the clay as close to the center of the wheel as possible. You know it's centered when your hands no longer move. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna come around the side of your clay, just like this, and you're gonna be using this area of your hands as the power center, okay? Now, um, you wanna avoid using too much of your arm strength or too much of your shoulder strength. And how I do that is by locking my elbows into my hips, then I rest them down, all right, on top of the wheel, on top of the splash pan, rather, okay? So my hands are, are immobilized, right? And then I've got my elbow here in my hip, so in order to put pressure um, and squeeze the clay in so that it centers, I'm gonna use the strength of my hip and my core to do that. So it, it's kind of kind of look like this, okay? I'm using this strength and this strength to control my hands, all right? I'm not using all of this up here, okay? Um, you wanna see your arms as these like iron mechanisms that clunk, come down and lock into place, all right? And they're super strong because they've got all the strength of your hips behind them. All right, then the clay needs to work itself around your stiff and strong hands, opposed to you working around the clay, all right? You're gonna, um, you're gonna keep the clay really wet as you do this. And so, first step is I'm just squeezing in, and I'm using this area of my hand. You really wanna think of this as your whole tool, and you don't wanna think of these as your tools. There's too many uh, joints and moving parts here, but this, is one strong mechanism, all right? So that's where your power is coming from. So you're gonna get wet, you're gonna squeeze it in, and you're gonna cone it up, all right? This is called coning. You're squeezing in the bottom, no place for it to go except for up through the top, all right? It's gonna cone up just like that, then you're gonna bring it back down again, just like this. Sometimes I put a fist on top, sometimes I karate chop, sometimes I take my palm and push down. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but these are techniques that have worked for me. All right, so I'm gonna bring my clay back down. This is called coning up and coning down. Can feel it starting to get dry so I want to keep it constantly wet because I don't want the clay to catch on my dry hand. That's going to throw us off. All right. All right, so I've got it back down again. We can see I'm not quite centered yet. Hopefully you can really see little tiny bits. I don't know if this is I'm hoping that we get a good focus right here on the, on the wheel head. So I'm gonna cone up again. Elbows are locked. Pressure is going inward. Once again, we've got a cone, all right. And now we're gonna bring it back down. And this is the process of centering. All right, you do this as many times as you need to. This is actually, this is, when you have little cones on the top like this, you can throw little tiny pieces, but I won't get into that. Um, this is the process, coning up and coning down, of centering. And it can take weeks to learn how to just center, all right? 
So this is the first time you're throwing with me in my class. Um, that's what this video is. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw your piece, you're going to pull up the walls, and you're going to destroy your piece. Because a lot of throwing pottery is about um, failure and um, making mistakes so that you learn how to do it right next time. Um, it takes a lot of practice, so this isn't something you're just going to get the first time. You have to be willing to try and try and try. And that's why my unit has you throwing at least five days throughout the semester. Um, so we're going to throw this piece until we wreck it, okay? All right, so see how we're doing. You can see the bottom. My fingers are still moving a little bit, so we're not quite centered. I've got my elbow locked into my body. My body's the thing that's giving me the strength, not my not just my upper body, it's my core, all right? And I'm channeling all that strength right into my ball of clay. I'm gonna trim up on the side of it here. Take off a little bit of excess off the bottom. With my wooden rib, I love this tool. And I'm actually gonna bump up the speed just a little bit. All right, it's feeling pretty close to centered. As you can see, my hand is right on top of my ball of clay all around it. All right, and we're not seeing a whole lot of movement.